now like to welcome Susie Silver, who, with her collaborator Hilary Harp, is creating a project called Toadstools and Dragonflies. Susie is a professor of art in the School of Art, uh, and her project, Toadstools and Dragonflies, is a web-based fairy tale series for queer-friendly families starring luminaries from the LGBTQ community. Hi, everybody. And uh, thanks for being here. And I'm just going to, um, what I'm going to show today is mostly uh, image research that Hillary and I have done so far um, as we begin this project. We'll be um, producing the first three uh, episodes of Toadstools and Dragonflies this summer here in Pittsburgh. So um, anyway, so basically, Golan told you what it is, and if you don't know what LGBTQ means, that stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer, or questioning. And you could also add I for intersex and A for asexual, but um, we sort of stop with Q just because it gets kind of long. But anyway, um, the goal of um, Toadstools and Dragonflies is to show um, gender non-conforming children, queer families and their allies, fabulous expressions of gender diversity in the framework of visually beautiful, complex, and ancient tales. Um, these are the Cottingley fairy photos from England that um, sort of pre-Photoshop special effects. Um, Arthur Conan Doyle, this is just an aside, actually claimed that these were photographs of actual fairies. So um, there was a time when people weren't as visually sophisticated as we are now, and uh, you could show them a picture like this and they would think that some little girls in the woods discovered some real fairies. Um, okay, so um, folk and fairy tales have an enduring appeal to kids of all ages. Their subjects, deep structural concepts like wild versus domestic, male versus female, human versus non-human, are the very categories that LGBTQ communities have sought to liberate from binary thinking. Toadstools and Dragonflies challenges binaries by imagining new worlds in which familiar rules do not apply. Using handmade sets, elaborate costumes, practical and digital special effects, combined with extraordinary gender fluid performances, our stories create worlds in which horses become boys, girls are raised by bears and dragons, and selkies live as both humans in seashell cottages and as seals under the sea. TSDF embraces what kids, queers, and fairy folk tales all have in common, a love of chimera, scatology, role reversals, and outrageous disguises. Um, as far as I can have discovered through web searches and asking people, it seems that um, this endeavor is the first image, uh, first moving image fairy tale series created specifically for um, non-traditional families and uh, gender non-conforming children. <clears throat> so, with the magical wisdom of fairy and folk tales. We hope to help children find new pathways through the enchanted forest of identity formation. The series um, will delight children with our unique aesthetic, which pairs a deep commitment to experimental forms. Um, this is an artist that we both really love, um, Joseph Cornell, who's a huge influence on us. And um, here we have a couple of images from the films of Segundo de Chamon who is often called uh, you know, the Spanish ripoff of Melier, but I believe he actually did something a little bit different, even though a lot of his movies have some similarities to Melier. They often are a little bit more out there visually than Melier, than Melier is. And then here we have um, another influence on our work, especially for this project, um, Victorian fairy painting. This is a painting by Richard Doyle. I really like this, the, the fairy. Uh, conducting the birds in a song. Here's a butterfly and chariot, which I, I really like. Um, and John Anster Fitzgerald. Um, I like the, especially the one with the cat. 
And there's our toadstool, our, one of our namesakes uh, for our program. And then some of the other influences include um, uh, Remedios Varro and Leonora Carrington, um, female painters who are often sort of associated with the Surrealists. So that's, that's what we've been doing so far, is, is researching which stories we're going to adapt, and then looking at images to start trying to expand our, um, the range of images that we can sort of play off of as we put this visual together. Because as much as the stories are important to us, we feel that the way this, the fairy tales end up looking is really going to make this program really different from things that have happened before. And then I'm just going to finish here with a couple of images from some of our previous collaborations together. Hillary and I have been working off and on together since 2003. And um, that last project was the Obligate Symbionts of Colobus Grand. And here we have um, The Happiest Day. And finally, um, Eric Moe's Adil. So um, that was sort of an actual fairy tale in the woods with um, with boys and a girl in a bouncing penis suit, sort of. So I'm just going to end with a, a couple of quotes. And this one is Jack Zipes, one of the major sort of writers on fairy tales. And um, so he says here, if there's one constant in the structure and theme of the wonder tale, it is transformation. So that's really going to feed our project. And. Uh, this is a quote I, I really like, and these are the people who we're making this show for. Um, the series four is, when my son was three years old, he informed me in not uncertain terms that she was my daughter. She begged me to put her back in my tummy to fix the terrible mistake. It's been three long and challenging years since that announcement, and I'm now the mother of a happy transgender girl who just started kindergarten. She's doing well, but every time one of the other parents at school learns she has a penis, it gets interesting. And that's from an online journal for mothers. So anyway, thank you very much. Thanks to the studio. Thanks for your time.